The Attitude Era. It's a mythically perfect time in wrestling to some, mainly comment sections, who always insist, what about the Attitude Era? Looking back through their rose-tinted glasses, it's all about stone-cold stunners for the boss, The Rock laying the smack down, and as many DX crotch chops as you can bear. Conveniently, that overlooks this, this, and whatever the hell this was. Regardless, without the Attitude Era in the late 90s, we wouldn't have the WWE we have today. It's that simple. And yet, it was this close to all going wrong, thanks to one man. I'm Adam Wilborn from What Culture, and this is That Time The Ultimate Warrior Nearly Ruined WWE's Attitude Era. Cast your mind back to late 1997. Yes, a time when that was a thing. We are just a week removed from In Your House Degeneration X, a dreadful pay-per-view that revealed the bare bones of the roster. Meanwhile, Stone Cold Steve Austin remains a long-term injury concern because of the whole landing on his head thing ahead of his soon-to-be coronation at WrestleMania. Change was needed, but could the man tasked with that change actually deliver it? The undercard yielded very few breakthrough acts, at least until the realization of the Attitude Era's fertile philosophy. The imminent 1998 Royal Rumble match was promoted entirely around Austin's quest for survival, more so than a field of multiple viable winners. Because, yeah, there weren't any. The Honky Tonk Man, Tom Brandy, and various other DOA gimmicks, including DOA, made up the numbers, as did all three faces of Mick Foley. Short on established star power, the Vince Russo-led creative regime instead used existing resources to perfection. This was key to the success of the Attitude Era, anecdotally and subjectively. Everything felt new. The new brawling heavy ring style that Austin popularized, the new blood red arena aesthetic that promised gore, the new unhinged reality leaning narrative that delivered it. Even boobs. Everything coalesced to create this incredible new thing. Anything remotely old, the strange NWA business, the double J version of Jeff Jarrett, the Legion of Doom, felt more out of place than jewels at church. Two days removed from December 17th, Vince McMahon on Raw had formally introduced the Attitude Era. McMahon claimed that his WWF wanted to push the creative envelope by abandoning his traditional good guys versus bad guys model. He had a new anti-hero to lead the way, but could he depend on him? And was Vince McMahon actually capable of change? You see, on December 17th, 1997, Vince McMahon offered the Ultimate Warrior a five-year contract worth a guaranteed downside of... $750,000. All the while, Vince McMahon was holding out for a hero. Mercifully, Warrior didn't accept. Can you imagine if he had? Whew! That eye-watering contract also promised Warrior more royalties than the entire roster. That includes Austin and his 316 t-shirt sensation. Instantly, morale already delicate in the wake of the Montreal Screwjob would have gone down faster than... Yeah, you can probably guess. Suddenly, the acts who would come to prosper in the WWF may have looked elsewhere, equipped with the knowledge that this short-term fix may have doomed their long-term prospects. McMahon wouldn't have signed Warrior to put over his new acts, and let's be honest, Warrior probably would have been less inclined to do so as well. Look, you got more chance of me beating Simon Miller in an arm wrestling contest. All right, let's say Warrior signs that deal in December. Which emerging starlet it's the WrestleMania 15 squash treatment. Does Vince blow off the Rock versus Ken Shamrock program earlier and use the great one to put Warrior over? Ugh. The Warrior needs a name to beat, else that victory means nothing. And The Rock is promising, just hasn't realized that promise yet. It is, of course, hysterical to claim that he wouldn't have in this alternate timeline. Losing to The Warrior didn't affect Triple H in the long term, but it took time. 
Now no one's allowed to kick out of the pedigree. TV time was at a premium. In this new competitive arena, certain stars realized Jim Ross's maximize your minutes mantra and altered the entire trajectory of their careers. If that platform didn't exist, everything changes. We all know where those minutes went when the Warrior did decide to return to wrestling in 1998. He spent 20 of them spouting what can only be described as indecipherable tripe. What if Warrior's overbearing presence prevented the character development of a D'Lo Brown? Or if his name value reduced the need for Mick Foley to take that iconic hell in a cell bump at King of the Ring 1998? I need to see Mick Foley nearly die, damn it. Vince Russo, irritatingly, takes a disproportionate amount of credit for the Attitude Era's success, as if his writing and not Stone Cold Steve Austin's megastar appeal made the difference. But there was a kind of holistic brilliance to it. Vince Russo does have a point. I can't believe I just said that. The likes of Kai and Tai and Steve Blackman didn't move the needle on their own benefits, but they were a quietly crucial ingredient of what was a genuine top to bottom movement. History paints a picture of the Attitude Era fandom as devout, loud, and receptive to almost anything. Remember, what about the Attitude Era? But they were also very, very ruthless. Hello comment section. X-Pac didn't devolve as a worker, but his lack of ability to evolve as a character developed an apathy that became iconic. If Warrior stalked the land in 1998, then maybe that crowd turns on whoever he crushes in a useless squash. Who does the Warrior wrestle at SummerSlam if he even lasts that long? The Ultimate Warrior is a star. You don't put major wrestlers in minor matches. Well, unless you're TNA. Does Vince book The Ultimate Warrior versus Stone Cold Steve Austin for SummerSlam 1998? Does the WWF divide the audience between past and future? And does it force Austin to slow his own progress to match Warrior's slow, lumbering style? Here's my thoughts on that. Any Warrior return wouldn't have lasted. They rarely did, but the potential damage was far ranging in scope. Look, this may all come across as cynical, and you can thank Michael Sidgwick for that, but maybe the Warrior could have worked something deeply silly but entertaining with The Undertaker. He did daft stuff back in 1999. Look at him here. Cuh, what's he like? Or perhaps like Eric Bischoff, you didn't see Warrior appear in a bloody mirror in one of the cheesiest wrestling segments ever. All stars burn out, and that is true of wrestling also. The Ultimate Warrior got over and jumped the shark over the course of his introductory promo in WCW. He rambled on and on and on and on incoherently for an eternity. Eric Bischoff realized his error far more quickly than that. Everything about his resulting Halloween Havoc match with Hulk Hogan, his sole singles bout in the company, was an antiquated and unmitigated disaster. All passe tests of strength and arthritic physical exchanges, it ended, and this is mwah, pure poetry, with the whole thing blowing up in their faces thanks to an errant fireball. You couldn't make this shit up. <sighs> Warrior just wasn't worth the hassle. All Warrior did in WCW was further the league's stigma as a dinosaur exhibition, a perception the WWF reveled in as the hip, youth-orientated alternative. The kids still say hip? That is the kicker. Would an inevitable failure of a run at best or something disastrous at worst tarnish the WWF's key marketing strategy and the reach that that secured. If nothing else, this crazed slice of trivia speaks to a sad truth. Vince McMahon was always immune to change, even at his most impressible. If Vince McMahon wanted the ultimate warrior at the precipice of the Attitude Era, it's little wonder he reverts to type time and time and time again. In 2018, dinosaurs roam the earth immune to extinction. And now WWE is the one stigmatized as the old man's company. Is it any wonder that the Finn Balors and Chad Gables are dwarfed time and time again? So there you have it. That was that time the Ultimate Warrior nearly ruined 
WWE's Attitude Era. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below and don't forget to like, share and subscribe. And check out others in this series like that time Triple H buried ECW in Philadelphia and that time D-Generation X were so hated fans rioted a house show. Thanks for watching. I've been Adam from What Culture, and I'll see you soon.